Jared Vanderbilt is one of the most unique bigs in the NBA. He's far from the flashiest player, and for the most part, the extent of his scoring game is going to be mostly predicated on camping out in the dunker spot, waiting for dump offs, and operating as a cutter. But his offensive game, when he receives these passes, is where things get a little interesting, because he's actually a really good passer, recognizing that this pass creates an advantage with the defense collapsing in on him, which opens up the pass to Austin Reeves on the weak side for an open look from deep. Despite being a big, he can bring the ball up the floor and find guys on the break to create easy transition layups, recognizing that Bamba is going to be getting into wide open space with OKC not really having anyone down low to protect the interior, which leads to an easy look. The Lakers are in a four on three situation in transition and with AD about to pass DiVincenzo and force Clay to tag him, Vando makes the read out to the corner with Clay unable to make it out there in time to contest the shot. He can show exactly what it means to turn defense into easy offense, with his hustle disrupting the handoff between Hardaway Jr. and Luka, and he's able to snag the ball before going out of bounds, throwing an unreal behind the head pass to Troy Brown Jr. for the slam. His transition passing is something he's already leveraging with LA, but even in the half court, he's proven that he's capable of making some really high level reads. This empty corner pick and roll between him and Beasley is actually something that they ran together in Utah, and it does a great job of drawing the defense more towards Vanderbilt at the elbow, allowing Gabriel to receive a feed to the dunker spot for the slam. The fact that Vando isn't hardly ever going to create for himself can, on occasion, work to his advantage, with Draymond focusing entirely on preventing any pass to AD, which lets Vando take a bit of a risk on the shot, but being rewarded for it with two points. This reluctance to score is possibly a tactical tool, with Dante assuming he should guard the corner pass, and Vando sells Steph just enough with the pass fake to give him the space and time that he needs to get to the rim for the finish. What Jared Vanderbilt lacks in pure skill, he makes up for with incredible feel, particularly as a cutter. When Schroeder drives, Draymond is going to be the help man, which means that Steph is the one who's now responsible for guarding Vando. Steph doesn't do a great job of keeping track of him, with Vando doing his best impression of a defensive lineman trying to get around the O-line, giving Schroeder a bailout option which leads to the slam. Schroeder brings the ball up, and the Lakers usually keep AD up around the nail as opposed to down low, which forces Gobert to play up high on him. Lonnie Walker is also rotating over to the weak side, pulling Edwards along with him. Schroeder gets Torian Prince into a recovery stance on the drive, which forces Conley to turn and contemplate stunning on Schroeder's drive, and Vando uses this lack of attention to make the backdoor cut to get some of the easiest two points that you're ever going to see. When you can't rely on what you're able to do with the ball, you have to figure out how to make up for it without the ball. And I'd argue that there aren't any role-playing bigs in the entire NBA that do it as well as Jared Vanderbilt does. Despite not having the most jaw-dropping stats in the world, Vanderbilt's impact can still be felt well beyond the box score. The biggest draw with Vando is his defense. He provides versatility, which is something NBA teams are rightfully placing a ton of emphasis on when it comes to their roster construction. Vando is able to operate in a lot of different ways defensively, being one of the few players that can reliably guard one through four, and I'd argue he can even guard one through five, depending on the matchup at the center position. We saw some of that versatility on display in their win against the Mavericks, with Vando being the primary defender against Luka Doncic. Vando is already trying to jump the passing lane to disrupt this feed from Hardaway, making Luka uncomfortable right off the bat. Now for a lot of players, playing a passing lane this aggressively can lead to getting left in the dust once the ball handler decides to attack, but Vanderbilt has such impressive lateral quickness that he's still able to stay with Luka and shut down the drive. Even when Luka stops to try and get into a step back, Vando decelerates quickly enough to still contest the shot, helping to force the miss. He picks Luka up at full court and he does a great job of fighting over Reggie Bullock's screen, staying actually a little bit behind Luka instead of in front of him, funneling him into the paint towards Anthony Davis, forcing Luka to rush into a floater that doesn't end up falling. When the Mavericks bring the ball up the court again, we see why it's so important that Vando is willing to embrace the contact when fighting over screens, doing an Oscar-worthy performance to get the call for an illegal screen, getting the Lakers possession with 30 seconds left in the second quarter. His ability to recover after getting beat on closeouts is really strong. When Josh Green gets the ball in the corner, Vanderbilt makes the closeout to prevent the shot and baseline drive, 
Josh Green attacks his front foot, putting Vando in a disadvantaged situation. But what Vando does is really unique. He spins in the opposite direction instead of trying to make a difficult 180 degree hip rotation, making it to where he's in stride with Green while he gets to the basket instead of behind him. He shuts down any shot at the rim and then provides AD with help to force the miss and get the rebound. This was a really risky way to recover because Josh Green could have simply stopped or done a snatchback and Vanderbilt would have been left looking for him. But given how strong of defensive instincts Jared Vanderbilt has, it's entirely possible that he knew it was unlikely that Josh Green would be able to process something like that in time in order to pull off a difficult move like that. His versatility makes guarding pick and rolls an area where he's able to make a lot of money. The Lakers were opting to hedge against Dallas's pick and rolls, with AD coming to meet Luka at the three-point line. And when you look at how the defense is set up here, you might think that Luka has a pretty clear pocket pass to Powell on the roll. I'd argue that this is almost intentional, with the Lakers wanting to give the impression that the pass is available, only so Vanderbilt can be there to jump the passing lane and disrupt the pass to force the turnover. His presence when guarding pick and rolls may not always appear in the most obvious of ways, with it looking like Luka has a clear feed to Dwight on the roll, but we've seen that Vanderbilt can use his 7'1 wingspan to disrupt a feed like that, so Luka opts instead to drive, and Vando is there to contest the shot and help clean up the rebound. I think a good way to summarize a lot of what Jared Vanderbilt does for the defense from a team perspective is he helps hide a lot of mistakes and prevent them from happening in situations where there's potential for error. This play is a good example. The Lakers are in a little bit of a bizarre setup on defense, and I'm not sure that that's intentional. Justin Holiday is relocating to the corner, with Powell and Kyrie over on the wing and in the corner. When AD comes to double Luka near the elbow, Schroeder is forced to come guard Bullock. When Bullock swings it to Kyrie, Vanderbilt is the one who slides up to guard him, giving LeBron enough time to recover onto Holiday, and the errant pass from Holiday lets Vando get in there and force it out of bounds. On this play, you can see him communicating and calling out the fact that the Mavericks are running a flare into a stagger for Luka to get the handoff. But AD is able to be there on Luka, with Vando dropping into the paint to guard a potential entry pass. Once he realizes LeBron has Dwight covered, he shows on Holiday to make sure Luka doesn't pass to him for a catch and shoot three, and Luka's forced into a crowded paint where AD is able to force the miss. The Mavericks actually come close to generating a good look at the rim here, with Green feeding Powell in the high post before screening for Hardaway to cut to the basket, but you can see that Vando shows just enough to deter the pass, forcing the Mavericks to instead go to the DHO between Powell and Green, leading to a turnover. You're offered more room for mistakes with Vanderbilt helping to cover for you on the defensive end, and he can be both a cleanup guy and a focal point of your defense. But there's this misconception that Vanderbilt is a non-factor on the offensive end, and I'm gonna disagree with that. While he's limited, I don't think it's fair to say he's any sort of detriment. One of the most important things that Jared Vanderbilt brings to the table is his offensive rebounding. Simply extending your possessions and getting you extra opportunities is valuable on its own, and Vanderbilt does a ton of that. His positioning when trying to sniff out offensive rebounds is Dennis Rodman-esque, tracking the ball where it's gonna hit the goal and figuring out where he can weasel his way in there to snag the board. On this possession, Dennis Schroeder puts up an early three in the shot clock, and the Mavericks are just assuming that nobody's gonna crash the glass, but Vanderbilt does exactly that, working his way past multiple defenders to grab the board and draw the foul to get to the line. He's in the corner when Troy Brown Jr. takes this spot up three, and he knows to fill this middle area of the paint, and he's able to snag a rebound which ultimately leads to the jump ball. The fact that he can play cleanup for AD is huge, especially when defenses are falling asleep like the Mavericks were during this game. Vanderbilt can use that athleticism and length to get some easy putbacks like he does here. Jared Vanderbilt is another example of a player who, yeah, they don't put up the most impressive stats in the world, but that doesn't mean that they're not good and that doesn't mean that they're not valuable. Jared Vanderbilt has already proved how valuable of a player he is to them, and as a matter of fact, Anthony Davis and Jared Vanderbilt have been the best defensive frontcourt in the entire NBA since the trade deadline, allowing only 99.7 points per 100 possessions. It really sucks that all of these injuries arose pretty much immediately after the Lakers traded for him, because he's only going to be able to be maximized to his fullest potential when the Lakers are fully healthy. But maybe this stretch where he's going to see an increased role is going to be a good opportunity for him to develop some of the other areas of his game. 
If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. That's the number one way to support the channel and help me continue making content. If you want to support the channel further, you can check out my Patreon with the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.